Hello and welcome to Telematics Wire Discussion Board with industry leaders. We have with us Mr. Srinath Mukherjee, co-founder and director of Sana Insurance Broker. Mr. Mukherjee holds B.Tech degree from IIT Kanpur and postgraduate diploma in management from IIM Ahmedabad. At IIM Ahmedabad, he was awarded President's Gold Medal. He has over two decades of global experience in management and IT consulting and over 10 years as success, successful entrepreneur in microfinance and housing finance. Mr. Mukherjee, in view of recent developments where insurance companies can provide telematics-based insurance, pay as you drive and pay how you drive, we would like to have your views. But before we begin with, could you briefly tell us about Sana Insurance Brokers? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you, Manish, uh, for the somewhat glowing introduction. Um, Sana Insurance Broker, actually, uh, I started uh, because of my, um, I would say, experience and uh, expertise in um, digital technologies. Um, in fact, in India, insurance, uh, as you know, is uh, underpenetrated, uh, particularly in the retail population. And to provide um, uh, and serve um, insurance uh, services to a large number of people uh, at low cost uh, requires digital technologies. Um, so based on my experience of financial services, I thought this would be a, uh, an opportunity to, uh, to focus on. Great. How do you think the recent regulatory approval for telematics-based insurance will be beneficial for vehicle owners in comparison to conventional vehicle insurance? Yeah, so directionally, I think it's the right step um, because I think um, uh, we should take advantage of digital technologies as they emerge and get adopted. Um, I think the most uh, important emphasis that I put was on the getting adopted as well. Um, because uh, directionally, as I said, uh, it is a, a good move. Um, because it will focus on the kind of risk uh, that uh, the driving behavior or the car usage results in. Um, but adoption, uh, I think, is a, is a factor because um, the devices themselves um, will not be necessarily cost-free. Mm -hmm. um, the second is that if they are not embedded into the vehicle, whether it be a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler, uh, there is a higher risk of uh, misbehavior and fraud. Because if you say that I'm going to do it based on uh, distances that your mobile GPS is tracking, uh, that is uh, amenable to, um, to tempering. Um, so therefore, I think the, the real benefit will come when the, these telematics telematic um, uh, technologies, if I were to use it, uh, are embedded into the vehicle. Uh, now that I think is will become more prevalent uh, once you have uh, more electrical vehicles uh, coming on, uh, on stream uh, or becoming more available. Because um, although yeah, internal combustion engines uh, vehicle, the higher end of it um, do have embedded telematics, but how many of them um, uh, people are affording these days. But with EV, that becomes a part of the uh, electrical vehicle, that is, becomes part of the uh, technology itself. So then insurers, customers can ride on the, on the back of adoption of that technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, what could be the challenge for insurance companies in implementing uh, pay as you drive, pay how you drive? I think um, two, fact, two, three factors. So let me take them one by one. One I've already mentioned, which is uh, the availability of the of reliable um, tamper-proof data. Mm. Um, the second being that uh, um, uh, in customers must be willing to uh, share that data with insurers. So there's a, an issue of consent and privacy involved. Uh, and the fact that um, that data is not going to be um, uh, misused because it's, it's um, 
uh, if you're actually getting information about where I go, where, what do I do, uh, that is a little bit sensitive in terms of uh, privacy. So insurers will have to make sure that they are um, um, careful about the privacy of that data. Um, and the third is that I don't think there's enough um, um, statistical modeling in terms of um, the, the risk related to roads that you traverse. Um, because that's still to come to say, once you have uh, information to say, you know, from many vehicles to say this, this particular um, route is more um, um, risky. And therefore, if you take it on a routine basis, therefore your premium should go up. As of now, it's a little bit of a guesswork uh, in terms of that kind of risk profile. People will fall back on distance-based um, um, uh, uh, sort of premiums, um, which is fine. But then um, the real benefit uh, will come from your uh, driving behavior, which is still to uh, be available. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you mentioned, a very important point, uh, the risk mapping of locality, of geography, of the area. Now, if vehicles do not have a tracking device or mobile with GPS, the data won't come to, and taking subscription from insurance company, the data won't come to insurance companies. If insurance companies don't have data, they will, they will not have this model to be trained where they are able to do a profiling or a risk assessment. So it's kind of a chicken and egg situation. So how do you think we will overcome this? So what will happen is um, um, initially what the, the uh, pay at, based on how you drive is still a, some uh, distance away uh, because of this data availability issue. Um, but the simpler models of distances covered, et cetera, uh, extrapolating that uh, might be uh, more um, easy to implement to begin with. Um, so I think adoption will happen, but uh, over uh, um, um, over time, as with the network effect, as you rightly identified, that once you have many people having the information. Now, the natural temptation for uh, electrical vehicle manufacturer uh, customer is to see if they can get a better premium by sharing that uh, uh, telematics data with the insurer. So that adoption has an incentive. Uh, and no additional cost, no additional um, headache, and no uh, care. You don't have to actually wait for an insurer to come and fix the device on your car and all that. So it becomes more natural for EV manufacturer, EV sorry, customers to um, buy more of these telematics-based insurance. And I think since the uh, direction, at least even in India, although uh, pace is a question, but direction is to, towards adoption of EV. I think it will happen. Uh, but it will not. It's not going to happen uh, as fast as um, people are uh, expecting. I think there's a bit of. I, I used to be with Gartner, so if I may use the reference, there's a um, hype cycle uh, that is going to happen. So to, to begin with, people will get excited, and then there will there will be a fall, and then it will mature into a, a stable uh, technology. Earlier in the discussion, you mentioned about the low penetration of insurance with the uh, retail in the retail segment and uh, you like uh, with the sana insurance and having spent a lot of years in the insurance sector and reading the pulse of policy holders so do you think uh, a kind of insurance telematics which could have a, a reduction in insurance premium will be uh, uh, something which will motivate them to go for insurance that's uh, um, um, not a difficult question because if premiums come down, um, uh, but surely uh, adoption will uh, increase because uh, mostly human, um, even Indians <laughs> are um, economic <laughs> people. So uh, that's uh, likely to happen for sure. The question is uh, uh, how soon? Um, and obviously that's, uh, that's where the penetration impact will come if it happens soon. And I'm, I, I keep ref, uh, sort of harping on the refrain. I think the, the related game changer is actually EV technology uh, mm -hmm. because it's so natural to have um, telematics on board that you don't, uh, customers will say, yeah, sure. Um, uh, if I get a discount uh, based on my um, usage level, which is anyway, 
Uh, mm -hmm. I, they also know that probably the car manufacturers uh, are tracking them um, somehow. The other the telematics are, is on board, so they don't mind uh, sharing that data to, with the insurers to get a better discount. But is it going to change a behavior on a um, you know um, in, internal combustion engine two wheeler um, uh, buyer in a third um, a three tier um, um, of a sell town? Not immediately, mm -hmm. um, because how will you track it? Okay. So, uh, so you mean to say like the volumes will be more towards the EV vehicle, uh, and in the in the traditional IC engine part, particularly in tier two or tier three towns, we are not going to see any volume in a short run. Correct, because of the device factor. So, the, if devices become uh, cheap and tamper proof, please remember that there is a very strong uh, temptation in India to mm. sort of game the system. Natural. Uh, we, we are Indians. So um, um, as long as that becomes possible, then the penetration levels will go up. Um, but then the insurers will also have to be mindful of the, uh, the fraud risk or the tampering risk. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier also, you mentioned about the uh, policyholder data and data privacy part you were talking about. But then there is an element of data monetization, which the insurance company may use to uh, like, uh, like cross-subsidize the insurance premium. So uh, uh, how do you think this, will this evolve over here in India or because will the people be ready uh, to part away with their data? Like the, the companies or the third party can use the data for personalized services. It's an interesting question um, because to some extent, Indians have got used to um, having the data being used for personalization. Anybody who uses an Android phone knows that, um, as well as uh, various other providers like Google. So I think the tipping point is not that big a deal uh, in India. I think the more important question will be also to some extent regulatory. Because um, how will um, uh, regulators in, um, uh, actually introduce the concept of consent? Um, because um, mm -hmm. without that, uh, the customer is always vulnerable to say that, okay, I've taken a telematics on board. You, you uh, said you will not use it, but you're actually using it. Uh, we know it, you know it, not, not wink, wink. But then uh, where is the consent element coming in? And I think in data monetization, um, I'm also looking at it from a health records perspective, et cetera, because I'm interested in this uh, dilemma. On one hand, you want to make sure that you are providing tailored personalized services. On the other hand, how do you protect, take the consent? Um, and, and, you know, people talk about... Um, uh, blockchain technology, et cetera, for consent, but it's still uh, very clunky in my opinion. So unless consent becomes uh, easy to establish and irrepudiable, as they say it, um, tamper-proof in, in simple words, uh, it's still going to be a tricky business. Okay, a very interesting uh, aspect you touched upon, the consent part. And you also talked about the Android model where as such, we don't give consent, but then it is understood that our data may be used for some, uh, say, some personalized services, which some third party may be offering. Now, if you go by some surveys in, say, Europe or North America, more than 50% of the users were ready to part away with their data for reduction in insurance premium. So one way is insurance companies can be upfront asking for consent and giving a reduced premium, or other model is they reduce the premium and they just Put it up like this is what you have. So, what do you think would be uh, uh, like happening over here? It's uh, something like uh, uh, your your feeling because yeah, sure, uh, it's a call. Um, so, my thing is again, human Indians are no irra more irrational than uh, these people else elsewhere. So, if I get a direct benefit from my data, but from the insurer. That's uh, I'm more willing to uh, uh, part with uh, with the data and give consent. The question that you raised is uh, monetization from uh, which is a little bigger, larger word than just giving me a premium. Can I use it, mm. use that data for other purposes, whether anonymized or non-anonymized? Because there also the, there's a you you appreciate the the difference. Um, anonymized data is okay because I will say it's part of a cluster and nobody knows what, um, what it's being used for. 
but if I were to not, I'm willing to share non-anonymized data, that's high risk because uh, God forbid uh, it gets into the hand of a stalker or somebody like that. That's a behavioral pattern, hmm. uh, which I will be very careful about sharing with for third party. I, we will assume that the insurer is not, uh, you know, um, um, not bent or criminal in mind, pardon my extreme expression. Um, but uh, so I will probably say, yes, use it to give me a lower premium. It's a win-win. Um, and you use my data on a, uh, for mapping and um, risk profiling. Uh, that's for, okay. Uh, makes sense. But beyond that, monetization has, has risks. Coming to crystal ball grazing. Where do you see the automotive insurance sector in coming 10 to 15 years with technologies like automotive telematics and uh, autonomous vehicle bringing some kind of in uh, disruption to this sector? Well, I was thinking about, um, about that. And um, I mean, I can take the Elon Musk um, at end of the spectrum, if you wish, which is to say that there will um, not be any more risk. Uh, because if uh, autonomous vehicles have anti-collision uh, mechanisms built into it, into them, uh, there will be no collisions. Therefore, there is no accident. Therefore, there is no insurance requirement. Um, but that's a little far into the future. So I think people, the path will be somewhere uh, along that line. Um, because um, information itself, so there are two layers to the, obviously, uh, the um, electrification of vehicles. So the one is the drive technology, the other is the telematics, and then the, the AI, which basically controls the driving. Um, so as uh, the um, AI becomes more sophisticated, um, it will disrupt in ways which we can't uh, you know, even anticipate. I give you an extreme example to say, okay, you have every vehicle out there autonomous and um, being managed to have anti-collision. So where are accidents? What insurance? And the last question, this is more about like uh, uh, your like uh, movement in the professional line. So what was the driving factor for you to venture into insurance sector after having spent decades in IT consulting, microfinance and housing finance? Sure, that's a good question. Um, I thought and I still believe that um, insurance at heart, like financial services, is actually an information business. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think about it, what do, do, is insurance all about? It is assessment of risk based on information, um, pricing based on that assessment of risk, which is uh, a rule engine based um, uh, calculation. Um, even uh, servicing and I mean payment, of course, is these days with digital technologies, a transfer of information from about your account to somebody else's account. Um, claim, servicing and claims are get, get receiving information, taking decisions on them, and paying. This is um, insurance is the perfect example of information technology at play. And um, for some reason, historic reasons, I found that that is not the way um, uh, people look at insurance. And as you rightly said, I'm new to insurance, uh, so I'm I'm actually you know fool's Russian kind of situation. Um, so, um, I do believe um, in, pardon my name dropping, but Mark Benioff belief that you build a business for five to 10 years later rather than now. And I do believe that there is digital technologies actually on, in isolation have the ability to uh, do the whole insurance business um, through just information. There is no requirement to have, you know, ma major amount of touch points and a lot of um, um, friction. So um, that's what keeps me going because I do believe that uh, insurance is at heart an information business. That's very exciting for the insurance sector, like your belief in the insurance sector and definitely with the penetration uh, opportunity or penetration like uh, which we'll be seeing over the coming say years or decade, uh, definitely I think this is going to be a very exciting field. And definitely with the technologies coming in, like we'll see how they assist in like reaching out to a larger number of people. Thank you, Mr. Mukherjee. Thank you so much for your views and your time. No, you're most welcome, Manish.